Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Team Internet Group PLC 2024 Annual General Meeting. Throughout this recorded meeting, attendees online will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged. They can be submitted at any time using the Q&A tab just situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Just simply type in your questions at any time and press send. I'd now like to hand over to the Chairman, Ian McDonald. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'd like to welcome shareholders who are participating electronically, as well as those present in person here today, to the 2024 AGM of Team Internet Group PLC. Um, I'm Ian McDonald, the chair of Team Internet PLC. Uh, it's now 9am and I declare the meeting open. Um, as we have a quorum, I declare the meeting open. Before turning to the formal part of the meeting, I'd just like to mention a few housekeeping points. We do not expect there to be any fire alarm tests during the meeting. Uh, please make sure that your phones are off and switch to silent mode. I'd like to remind you that we do not allow photographs to be taken or the meeting to be recorded or transmitted. I'm pleased to inform you that the meeting today is being live streamed so that shareholders and other stakeholders who cannot be present can view it and can view in real time on the Investor Meet company platform. I'd now like to introduce the board. Um, I'm Ian McDonald, non-executive chairman of the board. I also sit on the audit committee. Uh, Michael Riedel is our CEO, uh, who attends board committee meetings by invitation. William Green is our CFO, who attends the audit and risk committee meetings by invitation. Uh, and the following directors, Max Royd, non-executive director, who chairs on the remuneration and nomination committee. Marie Halive, non-executive director, who chairs the Audit and Risk Committee and sits on the Remuneration and Nomination Committee. Samuel Diani, non-executive director, who sits on the Remuneration and Nomination Committee. Paul Sifrin, non-executive director, who sits on the Remuneration Committee. And Claire McLennan has been unable to attend the meeting today and has sent her apologies. Review of the year. Before starting the formal proceedings, I would like to ask Michael Riedel, our Chief Executive Officer, to present his review of the company's performance during the year, followed by an opportunity for shareholders to ask questions before the resolutions are formally put to the meeting. Michael. Thank you, Ian, and welcome, everybody. And 2023, what a year it has been. As you can tell from this slide, the company has achieved new heights on all key metrics, record revenue, record net revenue, adjusted EBITDA on an all-time high, uh, a massive increase in operating profit, and uh, the operating profit combined with our share buyback this year has then also turned into a very strong appreciation of the earnings per share. And uh, as our as our indebtedness remains firmly below one times net debt to EBITDA. Um, the board has proposed to double the dividend um, for the year 2020, 2023 from one pence to two pence, which is one of the voting items today. And uh, for those who are relatively new to this story, on the next slide, we have a, got a brief summary of what we do. So Team Internet Group has two main operating segments online marketing and online presence. In online marketing, we build privacy safe and AI generated consumer journeys that basically take people from social media, the web 2.0 to the giants that the web 1.0 has formed like Google and Amazon and, uh, and we make a margin in between. So in this business, we have generated $657 million of revenue from around 6 billion consumer interactions. And at the bottom, you see the main brands that constitute this operating segment. Then if you turn to the right-hand side in online presence, we are a critical constituent of the global online presence industry. So today, every business uh, from a hairdresser to a FTSE 100 needs a website. And here we have carved out a very attractive niche, which is providing large corporates and global hosting companies with all the domain names that they need all across the world. Uh, this business has generated around $180 million of revenue um, from managing around 14 million domain years in the year just ended. And also here on the bottom, you see the brands that constitute the segment. Um, 
which are the most stellar brands in this in this industry. So while, while these are the two sources of our success, on the next slide, we also see all the work that that management and, and staff have put into creating the success in 2023. Um, we struck new partnerships with leading organizations like WHMCS or Microsoft Spin. Um, but we've also worked on, on expanding the business portfolio with the acquisition of Adrenalads uh, in summer last year and the recently announced acquisition of Shines, another business that will expand the portfolio of our businesses and, and take us into the future. But we've not only worked on the business itself, uh, we've also worked on, on our governance and, 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 uh, and are very happy that we were able to retain a second a second female director on our board now taking uh, taking the ratio up to 25 percent from from zero where we were still two years ago and um, and also given the the changing nature of the business we use the 10th anniversary of our IPO for a comprehensive review of our brand and have changed our name from central Lake group PLC to to team internet group PLC and you see this new identity not only, not only in um, on this page, but also in in the entire presentation of the company, um, in particular in the annual report, which um, which we basically, which basically the basis of this meeting today, uh, which now has a very different look and feel, showing all the talent that makes up this group and um, and shows the human magic that we that we add to the online advertising and the online presence industry. Then speaking, speaking here specifically to existing shareholders on the next slide, um, you also see our, our commitment to have a sound balance between investing into the business and returning cash to shareholders. So uh, to, be, to be as transparent and predictable company as possible, we've put out this five-step waterfall into our 2022 annual report already, and the and the policies still apply. So there is a progressive dividend policy, so that shareholders would never go home empty-pocketed, whatever amount of opportunities awaits us in the market. Um, hence the proposal to now uh, resolve on a two pence dividend today. Then, obviously, investing in organic growth is what every business should do. Um, nurturing the businesses that that have build the group as it, is, as it stands today is of course key. Then we will still invest into a creative boat on acquisitions. And we've just demonstrated a few weeks ago that we are still able uh, to deliver on transactions which are creative on day one um, as we acquire them. And at the same time, diversify the stream of, rev uh, of revenues, making us more resilient. But then all the money that would then still be uh, be available to the company will flow into share buybacks unless unless the net debt would reach levels where the board would then flip the, uh, the flip the um, priorities and rather look into debt repayments however today I mentioned before we sent sub one times net debt to EBITDA and uh, therefore still feel comfortable with our return of cash to shareholders policy Having said this, let's now celebrate the end of the 2023 reporting cycle with the AGM. And I hand back over to Ian to run us through the formal part of the agenda. Thank you, Michael. Good presentation. Um, so we're, we're on to the, the, the voting procedures. Uh, so to, to accurately reflect the views of shareholders of the company, voting today will be done by way of a poll on each of the resolutions put to the meeting. Uh, this is seen as best practice as it gives all shareholders the opportunity to participate in the decision making of the company and have their votes recorded in proportion to the number of votes, number of shares rather, they hold. Um, I'm appointing Maria Abraham from Link, the company's registrar, to act as scrutineer. Uh, a summary of each resolution will be shown on the screen before I put each resolution to the vote. Uh, as it will take some time to complete the poll procedure, the results of the voting, including the proxy votes on each of the resolutions, will be announced through our regulatory information service and published on our website as soon as reasonably practicable. 
When you registered before the meeting today, each shareholder, proxy and corporate representative will have been issued with a poll card. If there is anyone who thinks they should have a poll card but does not, please raise your hand and our registrars will attend to you. I should mention that for those shareholders who have already lodged a proxy, they do not, of course, need to complete a poll card unless they want to change their vote. You have three options for each resolution. You can vote for the pro proposed resolution, against the proposed resolution, or you may abstain from voting on the resolution. A vote withheld is not a vote in law and will not be counted in the calculation of the proportion of the votes for or against a resolution. Will you complete your poll card by ticking the appropriate box next to the relevant resolution, depending on how you wish to cast your vote? Once all votes have been taken on the resolutions, please would you sign the poll card and hand it to our registrars. Should you require any further assistance, our registrars or the company secretary will be happy to assist you. We will now proceed to vote on the resolutions which I will formally propose to the meeting. The full text of each of the resolutions is set out in the notice of meeting, a copy of which you will have received. Resolutions 1 to 8 are proposed as ordinary resolutions and require a simple majority to be passed. Resolutions 9 and 10 are proposed as special resolutions, which to be passed require a majority of 75% to vote in favour of the resolution. Resolution to approve the annual report and accounts. The first resolution is to receive and adopt the annual report and accounts for the year ended 2023. I now propose that the annual report and accounts for the year ended 2023 be received and adopted. As I explain to vote, would you please tick the appropriate box on your poll card to vote for the resolution or against the revolution re resolution, or you may withhold your vote. Thank you. Will you please vote now? I declare the poll closed. Resolution to approve the final dividend. In view of the results for the year, the directors are pleased to recommend a final dividend of two pence per ordinary share. I would like, I would now like to propose that a final dividend of two pence per ordinary share be declared, payable on the 28th of May, 2024, to shareholders registered at the close of business on the 26th of April, 2024, in respect of the shares then registered in their names. Will you please vote now? I declare the poll closed. Uh, resolution to approve the annual report on directors remuneration. The next resolution is to seek approval of the directors remuneration report. The report can be found on pages 72 to 77 of the annual report and accounts. I now propose that the director's remuneration report as set out in the annual report and accounts for the financial year ended 2023 be approved. Will you please vote now? I declare the poll closed. Resolution four concerns the re-election of Sam Diani who retires in accordance with the Articles of Association and being eligible, offers himself for re-election at this annual general meeting. The board is recommending that Sam Diani be re-elected as a director. I now propose that Sam Diani be re-elected as a director. Will you please vote now? I declare the poll closed. Resolution 5 released, relates to the election of Marie Holive, who has been appointed by the board since the last annual general meeting. It is a requirement of the company's articles of association that all directors should be subject to election at the first annual general meeting following their appointment. Accordingly, Marie Holive retires at this annual general meeting, but being eligible, offers herself for re-election. For election rather. The board is recommending that Marie Holive be elected as a director and I now propose that Marie Holive be elected as a director. Will you please vote now?
I declare the poll closed. Resolution to appoint auditors. The board is recommending that PricewaterhouseCoopers LLP be appointed as auditors. I propose, therefore, that PricewaterhouseCoopers be appointed as the company's auditor. Will you please vote now? I declare the poll closed. Resolution to fix auditors' remuneration. I will now put resolution seven to the meeting. I propose that the directors be authorized to fix the auditors' remuneration. Will you please vote now? I declare the poll closed. We now come on to resolution eight, which relates to the authority to issue shares. Before the directors are able to issue shares, they must first be authorized by shareholders to do so. In keeping with market practice and the guidelines established by organizations representing institutional shareholders, the maximum number of shares that may be allotted under this authority is limited to one third of the present issued share capital, which equates to £86,987 share, oh, shares. Sorry, apologies. The authority will expire at next year's annual general meeting or 15 months after passing this resolution, whichever is earlier. A more detailed explanation of this resolution is set out in the notice of meeting. I now propose that the directors be authorized to allot shares in accordance with the terms set out in the resolution. Will you please vote now? I declare the poll closed. Resolution 9 will give the directors authority to allot shares for cash, including the reissue of shares held in Treasury, without first offering them to existing shareholders in proportion to their existing holding of, order of shares in keeping with market practice and institutional guidelines. The number of shares to which this proposed authority relates is limited to 10% of the current issued share capital. The authority will expire at next year's AGM or 15 months after passing this resolution, whichever is the earlier. A more detailed explanation of this resolution is set out in the notice of the meeting. I now propose that the directors be authorized to disapply the statutory preemption provisions in accordance with resolution with the resolution. As this is a special resolution, a majority of 75% will be required. Will you please vote now? I declare the poll closed. Resolution to, to authorize company to purchase own shares. We will now come to resolution 10. Before we do so, it has come to the attention of the company that the notice of meeting contains a typographical error at resolution 10. This error was identified after the circular was published and posted to shareholders ahead of today's meeting. The correction is noted at resolution 10, paragraph D of the original circular that states, this authority shall expire unless previously revoked, varied or renewed on the 1st of July, 2024, or if sooner at the end of the next annual general meeting. The resolution should state instead that this authority shall expire unless previously revoked, varied or renewed on the 1st of July, 2025, or if sooner at the end of the next annual general meeting. I now propose that the correct version of the resolution be substituted and the typographical error rectified. Will you please vote now? I declare the poll closed. Thank you. The purpose of resolution 10 is to authorize the company to purchase some of its own ordinary shares on such terms and in such a manner as the directors may from time to time determine. The authority sought limits the maximum number of shares purchased to 26 million and 96,000. The minimum and maximum prices that may be paid for the shares are as set out in the resolution. 
I would like to emphasize that the directors would only purchase shares in the market if they are satisfied that such purchase is in the best interest of shareholders and could be reasonably expected to result in an increase in earnings per share. The authority will expire at next year's annual general meeting on 1st of July 2025 or, sorry, on the 1st of July 2025, whichever is the earlier. The Companies Act 2006 permits companies to hold any shares acquired by way of market purchases in Treasury rather than having to cancel them. The company may consider holding any of its own shares purchased as Treasury shares, as this would give the company the ability to reissue Treasury shares as and when required quickly and cost effectively and would provide the company with additional flexibility in the management of its capital base. No dividends will be shared, will be paid on shares while held in Treasury and no voting rights will attach to those shares. I now propose that the company be authorised to purchase its own shares. As this is a special resolution, a majority of 75% will be required. Will you please vote now? I declare the poll closed. Um, concluding remarks. Uh, that concludes the business of this meeting. I thank you for all of your interest and attendance and declare the meeting closed. Uh, the results of the meeting will be announced to the markets through our regulatory information service and posted on our website as soon as practical. That's great. Thank you, uh, Michael, Ian, and to the board of Team Internet for um, your time and for live streaming your AGM this morning. Uh, could I please ask attendees online not to close this session as we'll now automatically redirect you for the opportunity to provide feedback in order that the company can better understand your views and expectations. This may take a few moments to complete, but I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. Sorry, Michael, is there something that you wanted? I see there might be a couple of things that you might want to address there before I just uh, redirect investors. Is there something there that you would like to respond to? Well, just, just, just as a courtesy, um, uh, we've received questions in the, um, through the website. Uh, which are, can you give a little insight into your plans for capital allocation, dividend increase welcome, but for three organic growth, uh, organic measures and M&A. So uh, we've, we've we laid out the, the five step allocation plan. Thank you for switching to the exact slide. And um, we've just announced a major acquisition um, pretty much exactly one month ago and um, are, are yet to complete this acquisition, so um, you should not expect any other such um, announcements in this quarter. And the second question is, do you see the positive momentum in the business continuing through the rest of the year, and what milestone, milestones uh, should we look out for? The milestone of this company is always Q4. Um, most consumer relevant events in the Western world, like Thanksgiving and Christmas, um, all fall into the fourth quarter. This is why, by nature, it is always the strongest quarter of the group. And we are already looking forward to it and are preparing for it all year long. And uh, But for the rest, we expect to continue to outperform all our peers in the market and um, are looking forward to the rest of the year. That's great. Michael, thank you once again for taking those questions. Can I please ask attendees not to close this session as we'll now automatically redirect you for the opportunity to provide your feedback in order that the board can better understand your views and expectations. It's going to take a few moments to complete, but I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the board of Team Internet Group PLC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's annual general meeting and wish you all a very pleasant morning. Thank you.